In this video, I'm going to talk about the lotus effect. She has a very unique structure, as you can see here on this microscopy image. And this very unique structure allows for like a self-cleaning surface. So I'm Professor Marlies Peter, and I have a playlist in bio-inspired in theater as well. I describe more about innovations that are inspired by nature. So obviously the lotus effect is named after the lotus flower, but there are other plants that exhibit this effect. So what does this relate to? Well, we're talking about self-cleaning properties that are the result of what we call ultra-hydrophobicity. So hydrophobicity in Greek means water theory. So in essence, what it means if you have something like a surface that really likes water, so here in the image you can kind of see that on the right, it tends to spread out quite a lot because it likes the water, it's attracted to it. However, if you have something which is ultra-hydrophobic or hydrophobic, it doesn't like the contact with the surface. So what you can see then, and this is what's represented on the left in this image, get a very high surface tension, which leads to the droplets of the water that you have assuming a very spherical shape. So because of that, uh, and this is all, we measure this by what we call the, the contact angle between the surface uh, and uh, the droplet that you have. Because of that, uh, it makes very minimal contact with the surface. So we know that, for instance, for the lotus flower, this can go up to 170 degrees, so you get like a nearly perfect spherical shape. And you have a contact area of around only 0.6%. So what you see, and this is because this lotus flower has like a very rich kind of structure, the water droplet really isn't very much into contact with the surface at all. So it's almost like you have like little air pockets in between. Or a surface that's not ultra hydrophobic, but a surface that quite likes water, you can see if water droplet would run off, it wouldn't pick up the dust particles that are associated with it. However, if you have this nearly spherical shape, you would see what happens is that as it kind of rolls off, you would see it picks up the dust particles and it takes them with them. And this is because of this very unique structure that you have in the lotus leaf. So actually, it's a double structure. So part of it is just the structure, the microscopy structure that you can see, but it's these tiny protrusions. So in essence, you've got like little spikes or little indents, uh, which cause for this ultra hydrophobic effect. But there is a second element to it, which is this waxy layer, which is coated on top of these protrusions, which contributes towards this ultra hydrophobic effect. And this regenerates itself. So that means that they will maintain this uh, over the lifetime of the plant. Now, what you can see is that because it picks up the dust particles, but what's very important here for the plant, we can imagine it's not just dirt particles, but it's also a very good way of protecting themselves from pathogens and bacteria, because they just, if the water would come off, it would literally clean them off the surface. How can we mimic this effect? So it's known for a long time, actually, that these lotus leaves have this particular self-cleaning effect, that there was something special about them. However, it wasn't until you had more advanced microscopy techniques in the 70s that I found out what was the mechanism behind the self-cleaning. So even though we tried very hard, you can see we can very nicely replicate the surface. And this is actually kind of what you see in that image here, uh, where you have uh, on, on the top, you can actually see this lotus leaf. And on the bottom, you see a synthetic surface. So what you can do if you can cast, for instance, uh, another polymer on top of it and then when you peel it off you can mimic that kind of ridge structure that you have in the lotus leaf but as i mentioned before it's not just related to the morphological structure there's also like a very defined um, polymer like waxy layer that contributed to this effect in terms of the lotus flower so there are other ways of how you can do this nowadays so i said you can cast it and you can make a kind of like an imprint of what the surface looks like and at first glance, it looks almost exactly identical. Uh, you can, but you can also achieve this by, for instance, different laser techniques where you can have like these little spikes or protrusions that you want. However, we do know now that it's very difficult to scale the cell. So imagine if you wanted to do this on a large scale. So for instance, a big surface on like a car, uh, on, our, on our building. These are not particularly techniques that are very scalable. We know that these polymers can provide a very interesting alternative, and particularly we can look at uh, some kind of natural polymers such as cellulose and shape them according to the same way.
So there are quite a few commercial applications of this so-called lotus effect, and mainly for self-cleaning coatings. Um, but you can imagine that it can be used for a lot of other applications as well. And here you can see what I call this PDMS mold, which is very specific polymer, uh, where you, if you capture that on top of like a lotus leaf and then you peel it off, you get a, like a lotus-inspired nanohybrid surface. In this case, this was made from starch, so that's why I said why these polymers are very important. Uh, but it's not just for like self-cleaning coatings, so you can imagine why this for paints and for buildings and cars this is very important. We can also, because I said this prevents um, like pathogens and microorganisms sticking to leaves, so you can imagine that this can be very important for antimicrobial surfaces. But there's a couple of other examples that you might not think of straight away. So examples uh, include, for instance, efficient trapping of solar light from solar cells, uh, but also reducing ice formation, which can be a big problem. And funnily enough, so I talked about ultra hydrophobicity, the other effect, so the opposite of it is the super hydrophilicity, can also lead to kind of self cleaning. So, again, here you can see what I talked about this contact angle. So, you would see that you have two separate sides of the spectrum. So, typically, we say anything which is hydrophilic has a contact angle below 90 degrees. And anything which is hydrophobic has a contact angle between 90 and 150. So hydrophilic, it's spread out in the surface hydrophobic, it assumes a kind of spherical shape. However, if you look at what we talked about, these super hydrophobic surfaces, where your contact angle is typically between 150 to 180, and about 170 is typical for this lotus leaf. On the other hand, the high super hydrophilic surfaces, you would see within a matter of seconds, that a droplet of water would completely spread out over its surface. And actually we found out that if it comes to self-cleaning, the opposite side of spectrum have a similar effect. And you can achieve this, for instance, with titanium coatings. Now this was a very short video about the commercial use of the lotus effect, which is, as the name implies, inspired uh, by a plant, so by the lotus flower, even though there are other flowers and other plants that exhibit this effect. So thanks very much for watching and if you're interested in some other bio-inspired materials then do have a look at these recommended videos or playlists.